Hello, in this screencast I'd like to show how to install Eclipse Kepler new version from Scratch. First of all we will go to the download site Eclipse Org Downloads and the current version is Eclipse Kepler standard. This means it will be almost clean installation of my favorite IDE and you need to install all available plugins all you need to use in your work from scratch. So first of all I will download version of this Eclipse. Once it is downloaded you just need to unzip the contents of the downloaded archive and for example here you can see Eclipse standard Kepler already on my machine. So I will start it. may take a while for a clean installation so I will choose the workspace okay and now let's see what we have on board out of the box so you can see right now there is only Eclipse standard SDK installed, nothing more. So this is pretty minimalistic installation of an Eclipse. And let's start from the very beginning. First of all, I'd like to have a capability to write a web-based application using Tomcat, uh, specifically Tomcat 7. I also would like to connect uh, to the SVN server as well as Bitbucket repositories. I would like to have some GBoss tooling, for example, Hibernate tools to generate podges, to generate annotated podges. And let's see what we will move on. Of course, I will use Maven and Maven WTP integration for Eclipse. And first of all, we will start from Tomcat server integration. So I will go to help install new software. I will select the Kepler update site. And first of all let's move. Let's check one by one what we will need. So for web development I suppose I will need Eclipse Java EE developers tools, web developer tools, XML editors, XSL development, some JavaScripting, perhaps I will use GSF, so web page editor. Of course I will use M2E, I will use M2E WTP, but I will leave this unchecked because I, I would like to have clean installation of M2E and M2E WTP. Of course I can install it later. Okay. And this one for adapters. Okay, for testing and so on development, I will leave this empty at the moment. Programming languages. Okay, modeling. To keep it simple, I won't use any modeling here. But you can see there is a lot of stuff here, specifically EMF and Linux tools and general purpose tools. OK, dynamic languages, M2E, M2E SLF4G. A lot of stuff have been added here. I have a clean installation of Eclipse J2E Juna but it seems Kepler is a step forward. Okay, so database development. 
Of course, if I would like to connect to the database from the Eclipse, specifically from the database development perspective, I need this to be checked. And for collaboration, a lot of stuff. I hope it will deal with duplicates of the sections. For example, I have M2E here. I have M2E where it is here. I guess it will deal with it automatically. And I won't install Myelin in this video, but of course it will be installed later. Also, I can see there is some GitHub integration, never used it, but it might be interesting. And Subversive, as far as I can see now, a default uh, uh, Subversion provider, Subversion integration plugin for Kepler. Okay, of course I will install Subversion revision graph. I will install Subversive team provider and I don't need sources at the moment. So uh, integration for Mylin will be installed later. And this one will be useful, will be helpful to deal with IDE specific settings. Okay, so at the moment it's enough. I will try to install this and continue video in a few minutes. So, after several minutes installation is finished, luckily without any conflicts, and I will try to restart my Eclipse and check what I have now. Okay, it's loading a little slower, but you should understand how many plugins were installed. Okay, so first of all let's check that we have database development perspective. Yes, that's it. I can add connections to various databases. Now let's check what we have inside J2E development. Here it is. So now I can set up my server installation. And also there is SVN, SVN repository exploring perspective. So. I can connect to the SVN repositories. Okay, so first of all, let's integrate our Tomcat installation. I will click this link, and it seems it's empty. So I need to download additional server adapters. Let's check what we have here. Jonas, Oracle, Glassfish, Jetty. Perhaps for Tomcat I need to go to their website and check what is the connector. Okay, so it seems GST service adapters aren't installed by default with a clean installation. Let's check. I hope it will grip through all available. Oh. Here it is. So I will install additionally GST server adapters, extensions and server UI. Okay. And I will be back after installation is finished and I will restart the Eclipse. Okay, so GST adapters are installed. And now let's check. Here it is. Let's add my existing installation of the Tomcat. I will just put Tomcat 7 server. And I will use installation directory from my development Java tools. And here it is Tomcat 7034. It's a local installation of Tomcat. Just download and unzip it. Or you can download and install it from the wizard directly. Okay. Okay. And it seems after reboot it requires some 
SVN connector subversion connector to be installed. It's only for first time. And I will use pure Java implementation for the moment. Okay. Luckily, this is the first time you try to use subversive plugin itself. It just means connector implementation to communicate with FVN server. Okay. No, I will reboot later. What I'm going to check if I can start Tomcat installation. Okay. And it seems it works. So in the next video I'm going to check simple Maven project, Maven WTP integration and deploy it onto the Tomcat server. Perhaps I will choose some database connection and install GBoss tools, more specifically Hibernate tools to perform some entities generation. But that's definitely the point of another video. Thanks for watching. See you.